Hi, our topic for today is paths and circuits. And uh, here there are a few definitions in the beginning. So in order to illustrate these definitions, I just chose one graph. And then here are those definitions. What is a walk? Walk uh, is a sequence of uh, vertexes connected with the, uh, with the edges. So it so looks like this, V0, and then edge E1, B1, E2, and then R, B2, E3, and so on. Last one is E, N. So uh, each of these edges is connecting uh, uh, the vertices around it. And uh, so what would be the example of a walk? You start with a vertex. Let's say the one that we have in the notes. You start at A, let's say. So a walk will be red. So we start at A, we choose E5, one of the edges, doesn't matter. And then we choose, we go, and we arrive at C, obviously. And the next one we choose is E6. So it's just like a really walk from one vertex to another using the available edges. And then uh, E goes to, uh, from E, uh, you use E2, you come back to A, uh, doesn't matter, then you go um, if uh, we already did. Um, and then, then we use E5 again, so we walk again on E5, which is okay. And then we are back at C, we use E6 again, and from E we use E3, and we end it. So the only, uh, the any, any sequence of um, vertices and edges connecting them is a walk, but then it's a path if we cannot traverse the same edge twice. So if we want a path here, we can let the path be also from A, so we go Then what if we want a simple path? Then we are not allowed to, to visit the same uh, same city twice. So simple path would be, for example, it says here. I will go red again. So B to E1, and then we use E5. never visit the same, never traverses the same edge twice, and then never visit the same vertex twice. And then each of them has the uh, closed version. Closed version is where the beginning of the walk and the end of the walk is the same. So these are not closed. So there's also a closed walk. I have to give an example of that. Closed path, we call it circuit. And then a uh, close simple path to go cycle. All right. So um, uh, another definition graph G. Uh, so a uh, two vertices V and W are connected. if there exists a walk that starts with V and ends with the W. 
and then graph is connected. If each two vertices are connected. So these are just um, definitions. So for example, on that obviously not connected graph because there is no walk from this point to other. So for example, B and E are not do not have edge connecting them, but, but there is a walk B, C, E. It's actually a simple path. And uh, so B and E are connected, then uh, C and A are connected, and so on. But they are not connected with, uh, with these two. And then, uh, if uh, the vertices are connected, that's fairly easy to show that that's a regulation of equivalence. So generally, we have equivalence classes. So here's one equivalence class, so all these guys are connected. There's always a way to go from one to another. And these two are connected, and G is just its own component. So these are connected components, equivalence classes. All right, so that's the terminology. Uh, and then uh, we can easily conclude uh, the following lemma. Conclude that the following lemma is true. What if G is connected? Then for every two vertices, There is a connected path, connecting path, and uh, and uh, this one is very important. Actually, we will uh, use it a few times uh, in, in in our reason. If a B and W are connected. a circuit. So if there is a circuit connecting the V and W, and the one edge of the circuit is removed, uh, the V and W will still be connected. Why is that? Uh, making sure that I'm not out of the camera. So, a lemma is proof. then every two vertices are connected uh, by a path. Why is that? If we have a walk, V0, V1, V2, and so on, and here is a Vn, which is W, and then what? So if, uh, if we have a walk, then what is preventing us from having a path? What is preventing us is that we are traversing the same edge twice. So for example, if we have here the uh, edge V1, V2, but then again, if we have the same edge on, on some other place, VI, VI plus 1, 
then, uh, then what can we do? Uh, we can just uh, remove, so, uh, so let's say what? Uh, one of them is V1, so let's say that this one's V1. V1. Then, then what can we do? We can just cut off the whole piece. So if we cut the whole piece here, then what's happening? We are not losing any uh, connectedness and because uh, uh, this part of, of the walk goes just from V1 to, the, uh, to V1 and then um, uh, we are still connecting V0, V1 and then we cut off this, connect with VI plus 1 and that extra uh, edge is removed and cleaning all the repeating edges this way we don't lose connectedness and at the end, we move all the extra redundant appearances of edges, and that will make it uh, and that will make it uh, still connected without redundant edges. And that's exactly what the path is. And then part two: What would that be if a, if there is a cycle or circle? If there is a circle where we have uh, V that connects V and W, then, then what happens? Then basically, if we have a circuit, there are, there are two paths connecting V and W. One is if we write them in order, like you know, V0, V1, V2, that's a circle Vn, which is the same as V0. And then our V and W show up here. Then, uh, then, then, then what happens? Uh, they have two alternative ways. So here they are. And then if that edge that we remove is in the, uh, in this, so there are two parts. So uh, these two separate the circuit into two pieces. So this one I will call from V, from V, uh, from W to V, let's say, so this one is clockwise and the other one is counterclockwise. So if the uh, cutoff edge is in the clockwise part, then we have counterclockwise exit strategy. And the other way around, if it's in the counterclockwise part, then, then we have this clockwise strategy and they are still connected. So that's kind of quite obvious. All right. Now we want to discuss uh, two special type uh, of graphs and paths, and those are Euler graphs and Hamiltonian graphs. So what would be the Euler graph? So 7.3.1, Euler, Euler graph. Euler graph. Euler graphs. Um, so, um, so definition. Euler circuit. Of a graph G is a circuit that contains each edge. Edge of G and So uh, there is a famous story about uh, uh, the initiation and uh, about the history of this problem, and that is the famous problem of Kenningsberg bridges. So uh, there was a river; it kept, happened in Kenningsberg, uh, then Germany, then Russia, Kaliningrad. So uh, there, uh, there are two regions in the in the river two islands, and there are two sides of the river, so the coral islands A and the D, and then the side of the river, I'll just make a point in And then the architecture of town was designed in such a way that there were two, uh, there were bridges here connecting one island. There was one single bridge connecting this island. And the famous local puzzle was uh, to actually 
uh, to walk over all the bridges and oh there is one more here yeah. to, uh, to walk uh, over all the bridges uh, in town to traverse them walking each of them only once and then uh, by, uh, while solving this problem actually Euler came to the ideas that are considered to be the beginning of the of, of the graph theory um, so generally uh, the difficulty of this problem is in the fact that uh, this uh, cannot be done. So there is no, so since then we call that Euler path or Euler circuit. So Euler circuit here would be a way to start anywhere one wants and then try kind of to walk here and then maybe here or there. And then if I walk here, then what can I do? Maybe if I go there, that will get me here. I can cover this, but this one's not covered. And people were trying different solutions. None of them worked. And actually what Euler did, he gave a kind of consistent explanation why this really cannot be true. So generally, I will just preview the theorem that we will show uh, in a minute. Actually, not only that there is no Euler circuit, there is not even Euler path. Euler path is the same thing, just it doesn't have to start and end at the same point. And the reason that Euler uh, provided, actually, is the beginning of our next theorem. And here is what he did. He made the graph. So here is C, here is A, here is B, and here is D. And whenever uh, we have a connection between two vertexes, then uh, we can connect them with the edge. So between C and A, there are two bridges, so there are two edges, so it's a multiple graph. And then between A and B, there are two edges. And then between A and D are two edges. Also between C and D, there are two edges. And then between B and D, there are two edges. And the whole uh, trick here is to just count the degrees. So D has degree three, B has degree 3, and C has degree 3, and A has degree 5. And then, uh, what we'll see in a minute, uh, that, that will be our theorem actually, if you want to have Euler circuit. Uh, we must have, all the degrees must be even. Then, if you want, if you allow just Euler path, then that means at most two odd degree, at most two odd degree vertices. Um, so, if we have this, these two facts, as I said, I'll put them on the board as our theorem. Then it's obvious that here this so this graph G has four odd degree vertices. So it cannot have an Euler path. So that's actually a resolution of that famous problem, of course at that time they didn't have all that machinery developed, and that's basically uh, what we'll do in the rest of this subsection. We want to see why is that true, and uh, why is that not only, it's obvious that it's necessary condition, uh, condition but it's maybe less obvious why is it sufficient. So that's where, that's, uh, where we, we are heading now. So. Uh, so here on some point two point two. Point two says a connected graph.
at least two vertices. Of course, that's not the restriction who need a theorem for such a simple case. With at least two vertices. Has an Euler circuit. If and only if every vertex uh, on the graph has an even degree. If and only if, so we need to prove it in both directions. Uh, first one is fairly simple. Uh, without laws of generality, assume that there are no loops. Uh, why? Because we don't need loops uh, in the, they are not helping us construct all our path and what our, our circuit. And what else? Their degrees too. If you remember that, that's the reason why in the definition we uh, we, we said that every path, a loop uh, counts as two, so that the removal doesn't change the type of degree even or odd. So then, with lo without laws of generality, we can assume that there are no loops. So generally, what if we if if this is like. that this is the Euler path. Why am I not, uh, not uh, so here it is, and then so here they are, connected with some edges, E1, E2, E3, Em. So suppose that this is uh, the uh, Euler path in the order of traversing the, the edges. And then what happens? So each vertex will appear somewhere here uh, once or a few times. So let's imagine that certain vertex appears here. And then it appears somewhere else, and it appears somewhere else again. So let's say that appears k, k times. And then what? Each time it appears, it's not connected to itself. It's connected to two other edges, and how is it connected? It's connected with uh, with the two other vertices, with two edges, one coming into it, one leaving. Then again, if a V5, if, if this is an appearance, then there is one edge coming in, one going out, coming in, going out. So each of the appearances is associated with two edges. So if it appears, the vertex appears, k times the degree of that vertex is 2k. For each appearance k, we have two edges, one coming in, one going out, and that's it. Why, uh, so what about the other direction? That one's slightly more complicated. What, so if every vertex has, so now we assume it, each vertex has even degree. What do we do then? So here's the idea. We, we start from a vertex uh, V0. So, so let the listing of the vertexes be V, V0, V1, V2. This is not a path, this is just a listing. So there's a list, we put labels on them, and here's what we do. We start with one of the vertices, let's say V equals V0. Uh, it's connected graph, so V0 is connected with someone. What do we do here uh, with, the, with some edge E1? Uh, we cut this edge and we put it on the display. So there is an edge E1 somewhere connecting V0 and V1. So it's on the side in the storage. Then what happens? V1 having an odd degree, one of them was cut, must have an exit edge. So there must be a V2 here that it connects to. And then we 
cut that one off and put it on a display. So here is it. And this is it. And we keep going. And at the end, what will happen? See, there are finitely many edges. At the end, we'll just, uh, we cannot cut the edges anymore. When will that happen? It must happen back at V. Why? Because everybody, whenever you cut some, something, because everybody has even edge, whenever you cut on the way in, you have an extra one left because of evenness to just uh, exit. So you always have option to exit. So for all the others, except what? Except V0 that spent that one already in the beginning. So once you get there, then you can just finish the whole process. So, and then as I said, in the, in the meanwhile, we just recorded all these edges and we have a little short cycle. But we are not done yet, why? Because if all the edges were cut off, if there are no edges left, we are done really, here is zero in their circuit. But what if there are some edges that were just unaffected, that there is certain part here that actually didn't participate in that? Is connected, but the way we were cutting, we came back on V, but there are some other edges. Then what do we do? We just say, all right, now consider the subgraph that is obtained after removing all these guys that we already removed. So this is the graph G prime. Then by induction or by analogy, we can say G prime as being a smaller graph, G prime has a I could have organized this differently and say, uh, we'll argue by induction, assume that all the smaller circuit, uh, smaller graphs uh, have, have an Euler circuit, then I would use inductive hypothesis. Or say, say, keep going and get smaller and smaller graphs. Anyway, so what happens? So G prime, my induction hypothesis, G prime has an Euler, or Euler circuit. And then what happens? Let that Euler circuit look like this somehow. Then why the whole graph has an Euler circuit? So here's what we do. G prime, since the graph is connected, there must be one connection here. Uh, if I had green, I would use it here. There must be connection between this island and my first circuit. So there must be a connection. So then how do I make the circuit for the whole graph? I go like this. I go on my first uh, patch. I go, 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 until I hit that one where actually connection with the G prime occurs. Then what would I do? I would traverse that blue one. And then when I come back to V2, I would just continue this. And this is another circuit. So this one visits V2, so it's not simple circuit, but it is a circuit because it just uh, never traverses the same edge twice. And actually, so here it is, you go this way, then you traverse here, and you finish this way, and this is a circuit. So that's the proof of the theorem. And then what, uh, there is a version of this theorem uh, for Euler tats. I'll just mention it with a few comments here in 7.2.3. So, uh, 7.2.3, it says a connected graph. Second case, the path must.
must start and end at the odd degree vertices. Generally, again, from left to right, um, it is uh, similar. Why? So, if we have an Euler path, that starts A and the point B, then what happens? The same reasoning as before. All the intermediate points, wherever V appears, V is not one of A and B's, then what happens? The same reasoning as before, it must have a coming edge and a leading edge, coming edge and leading edge, so all the intermediate, so intermediate vertices. What about uh, A and B? Then uh, A, A and B are the only ones uh, allowing us to have uh, odd degree. And then what? Uh, it cannot be that one of them has odd degree because the, the, the total degree must be even. So either uh, none of them has uh, odd degree or both of them have degree and then we also conclude that if we if that happens we must start and end at the odd degree vertices because we just said all the intermediate ones must be even so you cannot have those odd ones to be intermediate so we must start at A and then end with a B and then what uh, what uh, what can we say how do we prove this statement Proof is fairly simple because for these guys actually here that have uh, uh, we can do the following actually um, oh yes so uh, so generally uh, we work the same way. Uh, as before, we start with A, we keep cutting the edges, and then what? Uh, then uh, the only way that we can stop is either that we finish at B, but then we are done, or we finish at A, and then, and then uh, we have a circuit, we cut those edges, we apply induction hypothesis for what's inside, and then we back is similar to the circuit one. Uh, we continue section 7.2 uh, circuits and paths uh, talking about Hamiltonian paths. So the definition and Hamiltonian circuits. So, uh, definition 7.2.4 says that a Hamiltonian circuit of a graph G is a simple circuit simple circuit that involves every vertex of G. And uh, we want to, uh, to address a few issues. First one is why would it be relevant? Why would we learn that? And then um, when can we expect a graph to have some Hamiltonian circuit and when not? And of course, 
if, if this is not the circuit, if it's just a path satisfying all this, then we'll say that that's Hamiltonian path. So, uh, so here's a nice example. Uh, seven, two, three. Uh, goal is to label. Uh, I got it from the apps book, actually. The book that we use as a reference. Uh, goal is to label two to the n sectors of a DVD. So, so that each two uh, neighboring sectors have only one digit uh, uh, different. What are the practical reasons for that? Uh, then uh, if we have uh, the error in one digit, which happens, then we're not going to miss completely like going to the opposite side of, of the disk. We will be more or less in the same vicinity and that would have less consequence. So if that's uh, the case, then how can we really uh, make it sure that we will include all two to the n, uh, all all two to, uh, two to the n sectors that would satisfy this. So here is the uh, nice uh, representation of that problem. Uh, you generally label uh, so so this would be in the case when we have uh, two to the fourth. So this is the case n equals four. So we have two to the four, which is 16 of these sectors and then what we did we just labeled uh, this is like four-dimensional cube how did we make it we took three-dimensional cube this is the black one and then we took three-dimensional cube uh, blue one and then we connected them uh, with the green connectors and that's really uh, was this 2d representation of the four-dimensional cube and then uh, each each of the vertexes is uh, labeled so this one is, for example, one zero zero zero. So this one would be uh, one zero one zero, and so on. So then, um, really, we uh, in that case, if we label all the vertices this way, then the neighboring vertices differ only by one digit because when you go from one vertex to the other, you only change one of the digits. And then what? The question is, how do we line them up so that we really uh, have the neighbors lined up next to each other. So here is basically what we want. We want uh, a rule that would tell us how to start and who to put next and so on so that each, each of them is listed and that we don't run out of space. And here is the idea. We actually want exactly how Newtonian path actually. It doesn't have to be a circus. So what can we do? Generally, we start here, so this one does have kind of, but this is just improvising. I'm not telling you how we can do that. You generally start from one corner and then color one cube, let's say like this. Then what do we do here? We go up. Uh, so we finish the bottom, we go up, and then we color in the, uh, so, so we go up, and then uh, we cover the top one. So we were here, we covered this, we covered this, and we covered this. So generally by doing this, we really visited all the vertexes in the little. So I was here, I was here, I was here, and now I'm here. So everything is covered in the little cube. So I put all these sectors next to each other as first eight sectors. Then what do we do? We go across the big cube through one of the connectors and then we actually cover the big cube in the opposite direction. So whatever I did here, I did on its twin, then this one goes to the right, I go to the left, this one goes down, this one will go up, this one went up, I go down, and then when I get down on this one, it was coming left, I go right, then I go down here, and then I'll go left, and I will end up here. So all these vertices were visited, visited this, 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 visited this. and then if I want, I don't need that. I, I just need Hamiltonian path because I don't want 17th one, but here is the 16th one. So if you order them like this, since each of them are neighbors, 
then I, you would get all of them defined by just one digit. All right, here, here's another. So just a couple of nice applications in the beginning. And uh, for example, here is a nice, very nice application that I don't have really. It's not so easy to set up the problem. I, I like so, this picture so much that I think I have to erase it. So, um, so what would that, uh, uh, that, that be? Uh, example 704. We are remodeling five apartments. And these numbers here represent the number of hours needed to, uh, to do the painting and carpeting on, on both of them. There's one carpeting and one painting. So, you know, where the first number represents painting. Okay, yes, painting is done first. So D124 and E77. So first number is painting, second number is carpeting. So, you, uh, so, so, so here's your, uh, here are the, uh, the standard constraints. Uh, each apart, so we have just two teams, one for painting, one for carpeting. So we would like uh, to finish all five of them as uh, in, in the quickest amount of time, uh, following a couple of uh, constraints. That means team finishes one before it can go to the other, and also in none of the apartments you can do carpeting before painting. So generally, painting has always to be done first, and then you want to minimize the amount of waiting. And then, uh, so, um, well, uh, we, uh, we actually developed a criterion of when is it better to do one than the other. So we say the following, uh, this, so if we do A, B ahead of C, D in our decision, uh, that, uh, then what? the total amount of time would be A plus maximum B, C plus D. Why is that? Because you, 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 you need to do first one for painting, and then who's next? Whatever takes longer. So generally, uh, either uh, you need to wait uh, B, uh, so to do D at the end, uh, you need to finish both things. So carpenters need to finish first apartment, even if you do quick painting in the second one, you still need to wait for those guys, or the other way around. If these guys are done, then they wait for you for painting. So whatever maximum BC is, and, D. and then the same way CD is less than AB by analogy, if what C plus maximum of middle numbers, which is maximum AD plus B. So the question is, when is this less than this? And then there is a nice trick. Uh, generally, um, what would uh, that be? The nice trick uh, is that actually maximum plus minimum, uh, we know that max of BC plus min of BC is just B plus C because one of them is max, one of them is min, so we don't care which one, because of a commutative law, so max plus min is b plus c. So generally we can replace max with b plus c minus min. So we get the following a plus b plus c minus min bc plus d. Should be less than c plus, that this would be what, a plus d minus min a d, for the same reason, plus b. Now A plus B plus C plus D are everywhere, so they cancel each other out. And then if we get minimum on the left side, we get the following criterion. Minimum of AD is less than the minimum of BC. So generally, uh, you order them so that, in such a way, that minimum outside is less than minimum inside. So for example, and then we record the decisions to the, and we record that as a graph. So this is A, B, here is C, here is D, here is E. So generally what? Uh, we take minimum. So minimum outside is 3, minimum inside is 6, so I'll do A before B. So I put an arrow that A is before B. 
what about a before c, the same thing minimum is 3, so these 3 is obviously killing everyone, so a is better than everybody else, so a for sure has to be first. And then, then, then the same, same way, I'm, I'm not going to waste time, so c will be done before b, and then everybody before d looks like it according to my arrows with this test. And then, so everybody before D, what's comparison B and E, B before E. And then what? We want one specific order, so we want actually in this graph, what about E and C, E and C, C is B, D. So generally what? Then uh, we can make a Hamiltonian graph, here it is, A into C, C into B, B into E, and E into D. So if we do this order, A, C, B, E, D, we are sure that we'll minimize the time. I don't know if I calculated it. I didn't, but that's what it is. And then what? So, uh, so natural question comes, is it, uh, are we sure that, uh, that uh, how were we sure that Hamiltonian path exists? We were lucky here that Hamiltonian path exists. Although, on this one, uh, we see quite many of those arrows, so generally uh, it was very likely that we'll have Hamiltonian degree. So now, after these few examples that, uh, that I both like a lot, so they are really realistic and have powerful ideas, let's address that issue. If When we see a graph, how do we know if Hamiltonian path or circuit exists? And then can we make it in a specific case and can we predict it according to some properties? So first, just by trial and error, so 725. So 725 is like this, you have it in our notes. So it looks like this, this, there's like parallelogram here. There is like rectangle here, triangle down. Shapes are, are really completely relevant. You can draw however you want as long as connections are there. So here is A, H, F, I, J, G, I, D, F, this is B, and this is C. So uh, generally, if you want, so so what? Uh, in this one, uh, the question is, does it, can we make a Hamiltonian path? And then here it is, be careful. When you are on a Hamiltonian path, these are very sensitive. Why? Because they have only two edges. That means once you come, then you have only one way to leave, uh, you know. So uh, when that happens, for example, uh, uh, or, or uh, let me start with A, for no good reason. So I go A H, then H F. Here you have to be very careful from F actually to cover I first. Why? Because I has only two options to be visited. So if you don't visit it now, the moment when you get into J, I stuck because if you if you get in I, you have no way out. So generally, when I have something like this, I will definitely go through. So generally, uh, the, the idea is always visit the place with the smallest degree, otherwise that could be a trouble later on. So what do we do here? Going to J, J goes into G, and then we cannot go here, we don't care, we don't need to visit all the edges, so we go here, we visit I, so we visit all these nodes. Then what? We visit D going this way, D we visit B going this way, and then we visit C, that is, we visited all of them, and we visited only once, so this is the Hamiltonian path. So it starts here, and ends here. All right, so, uh, so, uh, so here it is. Uh, so uh, we were just lucky to get uh, Hamiltonian path, uh, and then the question is, uh, can we make, uh, because it's not a circuit, we started with A and we ended with D, the question is, does it have a Hamiltonian circuit? 
So generally, uh, we will try. To, uh, I'd like to show you how do we argue that the circuit does not exist. So generally, we want to find some properties that will force that circuit not to exist. So, so let's say the following. I can start the since circuit goes all the way around. Doesn't matter where does it start. So I can start my analysis. Uh, let us start with the height. Okay. And then again, direction really doesn't matter. We can uh, reverse it. Uh, so, uh, so we will go. Uh, we went A H F. Okay. So I must be. So it has two options. So one coming, one receiving. However, you go. As I say, we can reverse it. So definitely, if that circuit exists, we are arguing by contradiction. Uh, one one uh, edge must go through F, either this way or that way, as I said, we can re reverse it, so I'll, I'll think of it this way. So from I, you must go to F, uh, uh, circuit must have connection, okay, no, I said what, I is receiving, doesn't matter, analysis can go the other way around, so Johnny I, let's say, is getting it from uh, the uh, um, connection from I and it has to go to J. You cannot avoid that in this direction or the other. And then what? Uh, H must be included because uh, if you if you don't include H, if you go later on you will be stuck at H so there is no way for you to get uh, to get there the other way around. So you must have some. So however you make a circuit in one or the other direction is it must have H F I J and A and then what H has only can get from A. So generally this is forced because of those two, those elements of some degree two, no matter how we would choose that circuit, it must have, as I said, in one or the other direction, it must have A H F I J. So we uh, we didn't assume uh, anything special, and then what uh, degree of C? So these degrees uh, two were were crucial. Since degree of C is two, as I said, you must go through it. Otherwise, you will be stuck at the end, and you cannot back get back to A. Actually, we, we decided that start of the analysis is A, so we have to go through C. And then once you go through C, you have to go to B. And then, and then uh, uh, what happens? Uh, we cannot visit a D. Why? Because if we visit a D, that's our last chance to get back to A. So generally, we have to go to I. But then again, uh, but, but that's it. This is contradiction. No, uh, we are not even allowed to go to I. We already visited. A, H, F, no, this is written differently, that's E, so that's E and I. Uh, so, um, so what, uh, if we go to E, now we cannot go to D because G would not be visited, but if we go to G we get stuck because there's no way to go because all the neighbors are already covered. If we go to D with intention to get to A, G will be uncovered. So we have the contradiction. So generally, just uh, as I said, crucial in this analysis was that we have quite many vertexes of degree two, and they, when you arrive to their neighborhood, you cannot neglect them. You have to go through them because that's their last chance to kind of get to get the uh, edge that comes and edge that leaves. All right. So uh, we saw an example where we would have and we wouldn't have the path. So here's the theorem. That's a nice theorem of or, 72.4 theorem of or. That says basically if G is a simple graph, with n vertices, and greater or equal three, such that the 
Ego for you, plus Dio for V is greater than or equal to N for every pair of vertices. Then, G has a Hamiltonian circuit. And it's an interesting proof. I'm not going to ask, ask you that neither on the quiz or on the exam. But since uh, uh, basically what? Uh, to the contrast from Euler uh, circuits and paths, where we had very clear criterion to see if they exist or not for Hamiltonian paths and circuits, there is no general criterion that would tell you that. So this is just a special case that tells you basically this is just sufficient condition. So be careful, don't use this wrongly. So this is sufficient condition if you have heavily loaded graph because this says that really heavy degree uh, elements that generally have very heavy degrees. Then if that happens, then Hamiltonian is guaranteed. If that doesn't happen, we just don't know. Don't assume now when this is that would be the wrong way to use logic. If a graph doesn't satisfy this, then it doesn't have some return. No, no. Uh, for example, this one has very, so when you take I, H, and C, their sum of degrees is just four. So it doesn't satisfy this, but it still has Hamiltonian path. At least, okay, this is for uh, for, for circuit. But it's e easy to, s to make examples of, of uh, Hamiltonian uh, of graphs that do not satisfy this but still have Hamiltonian circuit. So this is just sufficient condition, and it's interesting to see the proof. So proof goes like this. Assume that, uh, that a G is the minimal graph. So, so let's argue by, uh, by contradiction. So uh, we, we assume that the graph satisfied this, but doesn't have a Hamiltonian circle. So then assume that G is the minimal graph satisfying uh, the condition. But not having What does that mean actually? That means if we just, if it's minimal, that means if we just add one edge, it, it will have Hamiltonian circuits. Otherwise, we would keep cutting and get smaller and smaller graphs. And then what? So if this one doesn't have uh, Hamiltonian circuits, uh, that means if we add just one edge, G prime would have Hamiltonian circuit. But now we go backwards, we cut that edge, and there is a theorem that we proved in the first part of the lecture, where we cut, uh, cutting one edge from a circuit leads a Hamiltonian path. Because it's Hamiltonian, uh, we, we don't change uh, the nodes visited, just number of edges leaves the Hamiltonian path. So without loss of generality, we can assume that the G has, or G has Hamiltonian path. So one short of having Hamiltonian circuit actually guarantees the existence of Hamiltonian path. So here it is, let this be Hamiltonian path. So we have graph here, G, with all that structure, whatever that is. And then when you line them up, you have like this, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, V8, V9, and let's say, and so on, Vn is the last one. And they are all connected. Then what do we do? We say the following. We look at the V1, wherever it is. And look at all those. So let, uh, let me label the degrees. So let's say the degree of V1 is K. Degree of Vn is L. And according to assumption, K plus L is greater than R of L, which is the number. 
the size of G is an everything. Anyway, we look at all those in the graph that are connected with, with the V1, and there are K of them, and I, I will call them T1, T2, to Tk. And I will identify them here, so let's say this V4 is actually T1, and let's say that this is T2. Then I look at the members in the path preceding them. So before T1, I'll call this S1. Before this one, I'll call this S2. And so on, I have S1, S2, and SK. And here is the, the crucial thing where we need our theorem. V1 must be connected with one of the S's. So if I have some S, ah, S2, S1, SK, then Vn, wherever it is in the graph in general, must be connected with one of them. Why is that? Because degree of a Vn is L. And we know that K plus L is greater than or equal N. So if he's connected with L, then what? Number of those he can miss at most K vertices. He's connected with L, and then total is N. So those that he missed is uh, less than or equal N minus L, so he misses at most k vertices, but that, that's exactly S1 to SK, but there is one more thing, and that is Vn is also uh, not connected to itself, so generally uh, among S's, Vn misses, Vn misses at most k minus 1 s. So that means Vn is connected with one of those s's. So there is, a, there is an edge between one of si's, green si, and the n. And then what, what are we going to do? We're going to make a circuit like this. We'll look a little like this be that s. Or uh, let, let that test side be this one. So here's as well what we do. We start with V1, go all the way until we reach uh, that SI. Then from SI, we jump to VN because there is connection between them. And then we reverse the path backwards. So we go backwards, we go, we go, until we reach the neighbor of a VI which is T, and that T, by assumption, is connected with V1, so from there we just jump there, and we get back to V1. So what will happen, we take half of the path uh, in the normal direction, then we do the kind of uh, uh, shortcut here, then we use second half backwards, but then one step before our V7, when we are guaranteed connection with V1, and here is a circuit. And this is a contradiction because we assume that there is no circuit. So assumption that this type of graph doesn't have a circuit gave us contradiction, and that uh, proves our statement. And then special case of this uh, theorem is Dirac's theorem that says what? So here are uh, corollary. Dirac. This is not saying Paul Dirac from quantum theory and from the differential equation course. This is his stepson, actually. So, um, uh, so, so what is uh, the theorem says? If degree of every vertex v is greater or equal n half in a graph that has n vertices, then uh, G has Hamiltonian. 
and that's triviality true. Why? Because if everybody is bigger than n half, then when you have uh, k plus l for any two vertices that are bigger than n half plus n half, that's equal to n. So the original Hoare's theorem is more general. It doesn't doesn't uh, in, insist on every member have, being heavily loaded, but just whenever one member is uh, weak uh, with the uh, with degree, the others must compensate that. So we have a little more flexibility. And finally, the famous comment about traveling salesman problem. Salesman. So what is that problem? Problem is that we have a graph where. Uh, we have not only edges, but edges are weighted. We will see that in section 7.5. So there are some edges, some connections. So, uh, so these are sickies, A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And there are connections between them. And then you want to make a path or a circle, depends on the formulation, where you visit all. And then there, there are some distances here, 17. So you want this, a salesman wants to visit all of them, uh, covering the shortest distance possible. So shortest distance, shortest distance, Hamiltonian path. So theoretically, this problem is very simple because you just uh, calculate all the Hamiltonian paths and then among them compare them according to the length of the road and then you get the best solution. But generally for practical purposes this is not a, an efficient algorithm and that's why uh, this uh, problem is considered still open. So we are still looking for an algorithm that would give us a good strategy for large number of cities and large amount of possible edges and distances to give us a way to find um, that uh, path in some shorter amount of time, like polynomial amount.